Throughout this course, I'll be using terms that may be unfamiliar to you. So, in this lecture, I'm going to show you the major components of the power palette and tell you what they do and what we call them. This is an image of the power palette viewed from the front, with the gasifier on the left side and the generator connected to the engine on the right, known as a genset. Your feedstock is loaded and stored in the hopper. From there, it drops into the drying bucket and is pushed by the fuel auger into the top of the pyroreactor of the gasifier. When the feedstock level reaches the fuel switch at the top of the gasifier, it will turn off the fuel auger. Remember that feedstock is what we call the wood chips, nut shells, or any other woody biomass you use to power your power pallet. The flare cleanly burns off any extra producer gas when the power pallet is starting up and shutting down. The gas filter cleans the gas before it goes into the engine using what is called a packed bed of the same biomass feedstock used to make gas in the reactors, along with two washable foam filters. There are two gas valves, only one of which is open at a time. One routes the producer gas from the filter into the flare on startup and shutdown, and the other directs the gas from the filter into the engine when making electricity. After the feedstock is burned up in the reactor, it ends up as black waste char ash, which falls into the bottom of the reactor, driven by the movement of the grate shaker. The char ash is pushed out of the reactor by the ash out auger into the ash collection vessel, which needs to be emptied every day. The process control unit, or PCU, is located inside the enclosure on the top of the podium. The PCU has a small microcontroller that automates many of the power pallet's components, like the augers and grate shaker, based on signals it collects from different sensors that I'll describe later. Under that, on the door to the podium, is the operation panel. The grid tie control module is an option that your power pallet may or may not have. It allows your power pallet to connect to an electrical utility grid or other generating resources. This is the generator, which converts the mechanical power of the engine into electrical power. On top of the generator is the generator electrical box, inside of which you can connect your electrical loads to the generator and manually set up the voltage unless you have the grid tie option. Again, the flare burns off the producer gas on startup and shutdown. The exhaust stack is where the engine's exhaust comes out through the muffler. The producer gas is rooted through the outer walls of the drying bucket to heat and dry the feedstock inside before the fuel auger pushes it into the reactor. This also cools the gas before it goes to the filter. The gasifier is what we call the whole system that converts biomass feedstock into producer gas. The gasifier includes the pyroreactor on top, which is mounted onto the gas cowling underneath. The air inlet check valve is on the side of the reactor and is where the air that is needed for combustion enters the reactor. On top of the ash collection vessel is its clean out port that you use to dump out the waste char ash. Again. You'll need to empty this every day. Inside the reactor, the burning feedstock makes soot and dust that would be bad for the engine. So the producer gas is put through a cyclone after it leaves the reactor to help filter out these particles, a lot like what some vacuum cleaners use. The cyclone ash can is attached to the bottom of the cyclone and collects this dust and soot, which you also have to empty every day. After the gas goes around the drying bucket, it goes into the gas filter. The filter lid is held on by a large hand screw that you must always keep tightened down securely. On the bottom of the gas filter is the drain port, where you can drain off liquid that collects in the bottom of the gas filter. Make sure the plug in the drain port is tightly screwed in after you drain the liquid. That's enough for now. I'm going to take a break while you take a short quiz on what we've covered so far. I'll continue to identify parts of the power palette in the next lecture, but for now, you should take the quiz to see how many of these terms you've learned. You should review this lecture and take the quiz as many times as you need to to correctly answer all the questions. You'll need to remember all of these parts and their functions 
to be able to understand all the material in upcoming lectures. Thanks for your hard work so far, and I'll see you in the next lecture.